Hello everyone, welcome to this uh, tutorial of microedit data analysis. Tutorial 2 will be showing you some uh, techniques of unsupervised and supervised classifications uh, system. And uh, for this for this practical study, we'll be using uh, the acute lymphoblastic leukemia data set from the Dan Boyer et al. And the PDF is given here. And uh, uh, for this study, they have actually uh, want to want to figure out want to see. How the acute lymph different classes of acute lymphopia are being uh, uh, I will say it's uh, uh, is, is progressed in in uh, and what are the genes which are responsible for uh, for this type of uh, leukemia so for that uh, uh, you can find the data sets in the gene expression omnipass but I have also provided uh, the gene uh, expression matrix in and the phenol data in the kit in the github account you can get the, the expression matrix from there so i have sorry about that um, i load the expression matrix first Then I, then I, uh, there are consists of 22,283 genes and 190 samples uh, from the patients. I read the phenol data. Then it consists of uh, 190 uh, samples and four different. So it has four different titles. Uh, to, uh, so what the what the phenol data has, it has the sample title, sample source name, sample description, sample characteristics, and this uh, the sample is being grouped into. 11 different categories uh, the 190 samples there are 44 uh, patients with hyperdiploid 44 patients with pre all tell aml one has 43 patients and so on so for the sake of simplicity and visualization i i give uh, a change i want to change the label names so i i make a variable it's a kind of a hash and where if you find this this name change it to this name so i hashed it using this and now uh, if you want to sample it so that these are the sample numbers the GSM are the sample numbers and they have been assigned the, the short names similarly I assigned colors to them so easy visualization of the of the plots since we'll be doing unsupervised classification later on so I assign the sample colors to them and uh, using the hash and then uh, if you want if, if I want to see the gene expression of the of a random genes for example 236 or and 1213 uh, so I select the gene numbers and and then select the rows of the gene of, of uh, the 236 row and 1213 row and I plot the data here then this is the text and then you want to put the le legend on so you can easily see the gene 236 and 1213 uh, both can be uh, both can be uh, separated based on the t cell exp uh, based on the based on this t cell so there is a high variance uh, high expression on this 236 gene uh, and uh, very low expression on 1213 so the t cell type can be easily distinguished based on the high expression level of gene 236 so we'll be reducing the data for uh, using the feature selection technique we'll be using uh, the variance the variance filter for uh, for reducing the data uh, so we'll be using the the apply function uh, if you look at this uh, two, it indicates we'll be using variance for all the columns. If it is one, we'll be using it for rows. So, uh, applying variance per column, you can see the GSM38 has a maximum variance, and all these things and so on. I just plot, I just showed you the top variance according to column, and plotting the histogram of the variance. You can see it's, it's kind of uh, very normally distributed. Uh, now, for example, if we do uh, a gene-wise, a gene-wise, 
gene wise variation so I just converted this uh, uh, just replaced two with one and if you want to plot it so it's very highly skewed and and then I need to sort the genes by decreasing variance so and then print the five genes with the highest variance the CD9 I'll do I'll 23a is having the highest variance among the 190 samples now I create a data frame put that put the genes in the data frame you can see I created it and and these are a these are not these are not sorted but we can later we can uh, rank them and sort them also something like this so we, we give the ranks to the uh, to the to the genes uh, using this rank function so we want to associate with the lowest ranks to highest so that's why I use the minus sign here now if you want to check the top five ranks genes uh, with the highest to lowest variance you can use this gene ranks names and uh, and the top five variances if you want to put the uh, if you want uh, the bottom five you can use the tail command you just see the bottom rank genes now if you want, want to plot the expression of the two highest various genes you collect the gene names this one is the first gene and then I, then the G2 then I took the expression matrix for that and then then I plot it so uh, so this gene and this gene the T cell so this two gene the T cell type of uh, of leukemia can be easily classified based on the expression of these two genes so this plots indicate that so it's it's a very uh, it's a, it's a very easy way to figure out what are the genes uh, responsible for this type of leukemia and there are like many other methods the variance is a variance is a kind of standard method here and you can just also see for each other cell types how which genes are important which genes are not and so it um, you can just play with that data uh, next we'll be using the PCA it's an unsupervised technique to uh, to to, uh, uh, to do dimension reduction I'll use the print com function on the transpose matrix and if you want to see what type of class is, class is it it's a print com class and what are the attributes associated with this it has sdiv and the rotation and the center and all this and if you want to plot the plot the components and see component one two and three you have one one as the highest variance and two and three so you can plot this variances in three dimension and where you can easily get uh, you can easily classify the groups uh, and just view it so i'll be using just two dimensional plots and So this is the percentage variance for each component and that one was last one was for the variance and the by plot function plots the principal component for you it's uh, the component one and component two there are other ways to plot the the principal components you can use the plot function also Uh, is PC1 and PC2 is 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 uh, is plot is being plotted here and where you can easily just see like the T groups are being separated based on the PC1 and PC2 components. You can increase the you can increase the dimension of uh, di dimension. You can create 3D plots uh, of the PCA like PC1, PC2, and PC3 and try to try to classify your groups more. Uh, if we want to plot the PC2 and PC3 only you can use this so so this is how they have class it's, it's been plotted and see it's not much easily distinguishable but some of them the pH groups and some of the T cell groups are kind of uh, kind of distinguishable here 
uh, now uh, comes uh, the linear discriminant analysis I'll be using the mass library for that you need to load the library and I will create a uh, create a G list of gene names uh, by decreasing variance and then we'll see, we'll be using a top 20 ranking genes by decreasing variance and use these 20 ranking genes as variables uh, to classify uh, to classify the groups so I select the genes and then uh, from the expression matrix here from the transpose ex expression matrix I I do LDA linear discriminant analysis uh, of this of the 20 selected genes with with no cross validation next I use a cross next I use cross validation which is CV equals to 2 this is, is from the mass LDA package again I select uh, the uh, trans uh, the genes from the transposed expression matrix and then uh, I uh, I just uh, run the LDA with CV CV true Next, I collected uh, the the classes of the LDA. Then I then I just printed. This is how they have classified it. The results, and you can easily see the table how how it is it is classified. Now I build a contingency table. You can see the contingency table how these results are being grouped between uh, between uh, the different. Uh, classes and uh, we, uh, sometimes uh, uh, LDA uh, print, uh, compute uh, some values as NA we need to, rem to compute the number of hits and the number of predicted results and the hit rate so we need to omit the hit and a number of NA uh, results of NA so I sum the results it comes around 152 rather than 190 so the remaining one were, were given uh, a value of NA then uh, number of predictor is 127 so hit rate is number of hits and number of pred is like 0.81 now uh, I want to permute uh, I'd want to do a random prediction I permute the labels here uh, compare the trading groups with the permuted labels again run the LDA on this Built a contingency table of known versus predicted class. Then uh, this is a, a kind of random set, and then how uh, this is a, a 2D plot of of the of the predicted results. So, So uh, the random gives me a prediction of 0.197. So it so this one indicates that here what I have caught, uh, so uh, it's it's 0.81. It shows like this this result is much better than a random uh, random random prediction. So this is how you uh, if you want to to do uh, a pr a prediction of a random set with. Uh, 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 with the LDA, uh, you can use this. Uh, so you can use this code. Uh, so this is this is the way of doing a supervised and uh, and a classification. So always remember while doing the classification, you need to test your uh, method, the LDA method, with a random based method, and just to see what's the hit rate is and other things so hope you like the enjoy of the video and for the homework uh, uh, this uh, this uh, we have already given you uh, the codes for that uh, on the on the website and uh, also uh, it's not a kind of similar uh, what is explained in the video but you will you, you can try it out and I would encourage you to to do the assignment because uh, this is a very uh, interesting field and you'll get a lot of jobs in this in this field and and, and let me know or you can just group email us uh, in uh, and we can help you out with uh, uh, with assignment if you have if you find any kind of problem